It's Wednesday, August 19th, 2020. Hi, my name is Tom Ogburn, and I'm pastor at Westwood Baptist Church in Cary, North Carolina. I'm glad you've joined me at my table this evening. We'll take a few minutes to hear tonight a, a psalm that I think is good and encouraging for us, has a word of hope for us, but also some instruction. We're going to look at Psalm 9 tonight, and it is a good psalm that offers us a, a reflection of God's power and God's justice. We're actually going to look at it over tonight and tomorrow night. We're going to look at the first couple of passages, and then we're going to dive in the middle of the, of the psalm, and then tomorrow we'll finish it out. But I liked it because I thought it spoke uniquely to who we are and where we are in this moment. It's a word of encouragement for us. So here is Psalm 9, and we're going to start with the first couple of verses from the New Revised Standard Version. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will tell of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exalt your name. I will sing praises to your name, O Most High. Uh, the psalmist begins with those great words of praise and celebration. We know that this is one of those liturgies used in the midst of worship, and it says that there's a movement of leader and of the congregation back and forth, but it begins with words of praise. Uh, this is a good and encouraging word that I want to offer in this moment as you come to Scripture. I think it is important that as we come to God, as we come to Scripture, as we come to prayer, we begin by taking stock of God's story in our lives. It is so easy to become consumed by the negative voices that we hear, by the difficult situations we encounter, by the way we're feeling in a given moment. But I love the way this psalm begins because it's going to deal with some tough topics. But it begins by acknowledging there's a call for praise, to thank God for who God is and for the way God has been at work in their life and the work of the people in the world through history. I give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, a great image. God, I bring you all of me, and I'll tell of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exalt your name. I will sing, your, I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. It begins with praise. God, we see who you are. Because in seeing who God is, in praising who God is, it gives us an invitation to understand God's power at work in the world and God's work historically in our lives and the lives of those around us. It lets us come to God with confidence. In our praise, we come with confidence, ready for God to move. Verses 3, 4, 5, and 6 begin to speak of enemies and the struggle. But what I want to do tonight is I want to look at verse, beginning at verse 7, and we'll go from there. And here's what it says. But the Lord sits enthroned forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He judges the world with righteousness. He judges people with equity. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Sing praise to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare his deeds among the people. For he avenges blood and is mindful of them. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. We'll pick up in verse 13 tomorrow. But as we look at verses 7 through 12, the word I want you to hear tonight is this. It begins with the understanding that it is God who sits enthroned for all of eternity. Forever and ever and ever. Before there was a was, there was the presence of God. And after there ain't no more ain't, there is still the presence of God. He gives us confidence for it is the God of all of eternity. And it tells us who established his throne and offers judgment with equity for everyone. That we're, there's not a, a tier of those where we're determined that some are more worthy than others. Instead, he comes with equity as he views our actions. He views us with equity. He brings justice to the story. And sometimes that justice is wonderful for us when we're on the side where we cry for justice. And we'll discover sometimes it's work for us when others need justice from our actions. It says the Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. It uses a strong image of God as a stronghold. If you can imagine that great place in a fort where is everything you could find security. In the story of the Alamo, you, you see the outer walls as the, the Mexican soldiers uh, overwhelm the walls. They drop back to what they called the stronghold, which was the chapel for them. Now, the story ends badly for those in the Alamo. But that was the way that they understood. A fort had an outer wall and then that inner last keep 
that stronghold place where one would be secure, that last stronghold. And it is God who is that stronghold. It is not the weak, frail structure of mud and clay and wood, but instead the stronghold for us is the presence of God. When we find ourselves oppressed and in trouble, God is our stronghold. When we retreat, trying to find that place of security for us, it is God who is there for us. The Lord is a stronghold of the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. If we want to know where to go, we go to the presence of God. These are not just church words. They're significant for us. So hear that in the midst of this moment, when we face loneliness and isolation, when the coronavirus shapes who we are and what we do, I told Beth today, we had to go pick up some medicines, that my world has gotten much smaller. I've gone from traveling the whole world and the whole country now to mostly being in my city almost all the time, my part of the triangle, not even going to Raleigh or Durham, just here in Kerry all of the time. Our world has gotten small and it can feel, well, shrinking for us. It can make us feel anxious, isolated. Here that the promise is that we have a stronghold in God. So as we seek comfort and hope, for the tomorrows that await us, we find it in the presence of God. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. These are a strong word because it tells us that God never forget, forsakes those who seek him. When we seek God, we will be found. We will find God and God will find us. When we seek the stronghold, what we need for this moment, what we need when a doctor gives us a difficult word, what we need when we see a family member struggle, what we need when we feel lonely or frustrated or isolated, what we need when we need hope, when we seek God, the stronghold, God is there for us. We seek and we find God seeks us and he finds us. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion, declares deeds among the people, for he avenges the blood and is mindful of them and does not forgive the cry of the afflicted. For those who are listening, they imagine the war, and he says, listen, when you find yourself on the wrong side of the story, when you find yourself struggling, God does not forget you. When you offer your cry, he hears you. So tonight, I want you to know that there's a stronghold for you in the presence of God. Through faith in Jesus Christ, we find a relationship with God that is intimate and personal, where God makes his home in us, where as we seek to find the strength for the living of these days, we find it in the arms of God who is our stronghold. Our God is a God of strength. Declare his strength before the world. Our God is a God of might and of power of hope and redemption, of grace and forgiveness, a God who loved us so much that he came for us in the face of Jesus that we might know him, call him Savior, call him Lord. So know that as you face this day and the challenges of this day, you have a stronghold in God. So sing praises, find comfort in his presence, find assuredness that he hears your cry and he is there for you. Thanks be to God who loves us, who calls us by name, and who is the stronghold for us in the midst of our difficulty and our sorrow. Amen.